Okay, thank you very much for coming tonight. This is uh, Deirdre Archibald's performance piece, and it's called Her Kind. Please switch off your phones. <laughs> Possessed witch, haunting the black air, braver at night. Dreaming evil, I have done my hitch over the plain houses, light by light. A lonely thing, twelve fingered, out of mind. A woman like that is not a woman quite. I have been her kind. I have found the warm caves in the woods, filled them with skillets, carving shelves, closet skills, innumerable goods, fixed suppers for the worms and elves, whining, rearranging the misaligned. A woman like that is misunderstood. I have been her kind. I have ridden in your cart, driver, waved my nude arms at the villages going by, learning the last bright root survivor, where your flames bit my thigh and my ribs crack, where your wheels wind. A woman like that is not ashamed to die. I have been her kind. solitary figure in the forest. Nothing stirred. Nothing. There's no such thing as silence, especially in nature. If there is, it's usually ominous. Kate stood by the great venerable oak. Its arched branches spat raindrops onto her tawny hair. Her eyes, now dark rimmed and sunken, gazed towards the new town. It was grey and walled. There was no aroma of baking or cooking to tease the senses, for it was the Sabbath. It seemed to Kate that the world had turned upside down. A holocaust of grief had fallen upon her as she remembered the events of the weak before last. Her kindred friend Bessie, 
a jolly woman with a face that told a story both ancient and tragic. She had been paraded up and down, down and up through the town streets and the square. The bridal scold that hid her face, making her invisible. The bit sliced her tongue. Nag, they shouted. Witch, they shouted. Nag! Nag! Her husband, a toothless man with his grin that spanned the face, played to the audience. It was somehow like a sexual spectacle as he raised the stick and with one eat after the other he ripped her apart. It's the tearing away of identity, the tearing away of all things feminine. Tears pricked Kate's cheeks. As she recalled the last words that Bessie had said to her, Kate, be careful, be careful, be careful. For Kate was a woman rich in possession of herbs and stories, but now they were deemed hocus pocus. Be careful, cried Bess. We are a single woman. But Kate didn't need reminding. There was a stench of the sulphur that smoked the skies of women behave. Be passive, be pliable, be nice, be twee. That's the way a woman should be. And Kate's eyes gaze towards the sky and the moon played peekaboo between the satin clouds. And it was at that moment when she turned and she saw the great wolf. And she kind of had a laugh when she looked at the wolf. She knew it wasn't funny, but there was just something inside of that stupor because she was a woman who wanted to dance with the wind. But now her only value was her womb. Just like that wolf, his only value was his pelt. And with keenness of ear, she turned and she saw this man and he was pointing a gun. And she said, I'm not going to die defeated. And she kind of looked at the wolf who was hunched, the great son of the countryside, now reduced to a skeleton. So she leapt towards the hunter. And she grabbed his musket, that damned musket along with the axe that was scarring the earth in commodification, has held the woman's body. But with one staccato shot, it was the old woman, Kate, who fell on the ground in the mud and the dirt and her tears. The tears of her story watered the soil, waiting, waiting, waiting. There was an old woman and she lived in the woods, a wheel, a wheel. There was an old woman 
and she lived in the woods down by the river Sawyer. She had a baby three months old, a wheeler, wheeler, wallier. She had a baby three months old, down by the river Sawyer. She had a penknife long and sharp. A wheel, a wheel, a wall, yeah. She had a pen knife, long and sharp, down by the river, so yeah. She stuck that knife in the baby's heart. A wheel, a wheel, a wall, yeah. She stuck that knife in the baby's heart down by the river Sawyer There were three loud knocks came to her door A wheel, a wheel, a wall, yeah Three loud knocks came to her door down by the river Sawyer there were two policemen and a man A wheel, a wheel, a wall, yeah Two policemen and a man Down by the river saw, yeah They took her away and they put her in a jail A wheel, a wheel, a wall, yeah they took her away and they put her in a jail down by the river Sawyer. Yeah. They put a rope around her neck, a wheel, a wheel, a wall, yeah. They put a rope around her neck down by the river Sawyer. Yeah. Pulled the rope and she was hung. A wheel, a wheel, a wire. They pulled the rope and she was hung down by the river Sawyer. And that was the end of the woman in the woods. A wheel, a wheel, a And that was the end of the baby, too. Down by the river, Sawyer.
behind the mirror. She waits. She waits. In secret caves. She waits. She waits. Deep in the earth. She waits. She waits. In summer's heat, she waits. She waits. In autumn's blaze, she waits. She waits. Through winter's death, she waits. She waits. For spring's return, she waits. She waits. She waits. Behind the veil, she waits. For rent or sale, she waits. Shackled in silence, she waits. To sing again, she waits. Deep in our cells, she waits. Dark in our dreams, she waits. Until we wake. She waits. 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 for coming. Uh, I can't talk. <laughs> um, I'd like to invite Marie Mulholland in, who's going to speak about her work with West Court Women Against Violence. And uh, thank you so much to everybody for coming again tonight. Thank you so much for the kindness of all these women um, and all the men, the wonderful men in my life as well. To make, they've just made a fantastic supportive network and I couldn't have done this without the aid and the help of all these wonderful people around us. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming and welcome to I did this gig because I've got a sweatshirt. Um, uh, and uh, when Deirdre asked me, I want to say thank you to Deirdre. Um, I work with a lot of very brave women, and that was an extremely brave performance. Can I say that? Um, and um, I, I don't know how you did that. I don't know how you, in the, in the middle of all of this, even thought about other women, which is what you did when you invited me to come. And uh, because of the stress, you must have been the pressure and just the nervous anxiety. So thank you. So thank you very much. Um, I've thought quite a lot about this theme since, since Deidre um, contacted me earlier in the week and it's, um, I suppose in a way, as someone who's always worked with women and been a feminist all my, all my adult life, I, I've always been interested in what happened to the women, to the witches, to the midwives, to the healers, because it was usually midwives and healers who were the women who were burning the stake, but they were also the women who weren't orthodox, they were the women who could not be controlled, they are the women who took back their own power. And that was what made them dangerous. And we see that even today. We're not talking about centuries ago. We're seeing about what happens when women will not be controlled by the establishment. You know, we're still fighting for control of our bodies. We're still fighting for control of our reproductive systems. You know, that, that challenge goes on all the time and that conflict continues. 
And for the women that I work with in the domestic violence service, it is about, it's also about control. Domestic violence is specifically about control. Um, it's about keeping a woman controlled. It's about keeping her in her place. It's about letting her know that she cannot be more than what he wants her to be or what he needs her to be. Um, and if she tries to be anything else, a good mother, a good wife, she would constantly be told she's not good enough. She will never be good enough. Um, we spend a lot of our time trying to actually help women understand what coercive control is. Because believe me, it's only about 30 to 40% of the women that we work with who have had severe physical violence um, perpetrated on them. The underlying abuse is always coercive control, and that's for the ones who've been physically abused as well. And it can be anything. I mean, I, I can give you examples. I, one woman, I, um, again, and believe me, and you've heard this before, that it doesn't just happen in one kind of home or in one kind of district or with one race or, or, or whatever. It's, it can happen anywhere. And this woman, uh, her and her husband were extremely well got, as they say. Um, they would be quite middle class. They would be well respected in their community. And he did the shopping every single week. And people just say, oh, isn't he brilliant? What a great man. Great husband does the shopping every week. Isn't that wonderful? And he always bought her a bottle of wine as well in the weekly shop. That was because he wouldn't give her any money. She didn't have any money. She wasn't allowed to have any control of the purse strings. She wasn't allowed to decide how much her children should have to eat. She came to us the week before Christmas. This is an extremely upper middle class family. And she had the money for Christmas dinner because he would not give her the money, and that was about control. Um, we've seen them, we've seen where women aren't, they can't actually get out of the house because he measures the amount of petrol in the car, and he can tell if she's been anywhere. Or if she said she's going to the shops, he'll know exactly what the distance is, and he'll read it on the meter if she's going to her mother's instead. Maybe to have a talk with somebody. I mean, those are, those are the kind of things that you're dealing with. And also, when a woman decides to take back her control, that is the most dangerous time in that relationship. Just as we see with the women who were persecuted and executed, is that when they started to take control of their own lives, when they decided to say to have some authority, some agency in their own lives, that's when they became victims. That's when they became pointed out as targets. And it's the same in domestic abuse, is that when a woman decides to take back control and decides that she wants to leave, and that she's going to leave, that is the most, it is the most dangerous time. And that's when we have to do the work that we do, which is called safety planning. And we will work out with her what is the best way to do this, what is the safest way to do this, and what support she's going to need in order to get away clean. So that's a lot of the work that we do. Um, we also do court accompaniment. I originally and dearly wanted to have this on the court steps, and I was going, yes! Uh, because the courts, the courts are a bit like the duck and stool uh, for women in, in domestic violence situations. You know, you're never, you're never ever kind of like, you can't be right for being wrong kind of thing. And we have a, a, a justice system that really doesn't, it's not fit for the purpose of domestic abuse. Um, we need specialised courts and we need specialist understanding of what happens in domestic violence situations. And why women sometimes don't make statements. Uh, and why they can't testify against their abusers. All that needs to be understood about the fear that, that goes with that. But I'm going to end up very quickly here with a little bit of hope. Right? And the little bit of hope is this, is that um, for the last couple of years now, um, we have been fighting very, very hard and campaigning very hard for a, a, a safe house in West Cork. We have no refuge in West Cork. We deal with over 200 women a year. We get nearly 2,000 calls a year. Um, but with 200, 200 women a year. Um, and uh, right now, I have a woman and a two-year-old little girl who have been in a B&B &B since the 8th of March, International Women's Day, which is what I always remember. Um, and she's there because we can't find anywhere else for her to go. And it's a B&B &B that has, um, it's, actually, it's actually not even a real B&B. &B. It's, a, it's a lovely man and he, he keeps this B&B &B and he uses it for kind of workers that are coming through West Cork, the construction workers, the guys laying the cable, whatever. It doesn't even have a breakfast room. He doesn't do breakfast as such it's just really somewhere to stay for the night and it's all men in there and she's been there with her two old chicks since the 8th of March and it's not any place for her to be I mean she's traumatised already 
Um, she has been there for quite a long time. But as I say, we are campaigning really hard for a safe house. The nearest refuge is in Cork City, and it only has space for six families. That's the and that's for the entire of Cork County and City. That is the, all the spaces that there is. I haven't been able to get a woman into the refuge for two and a half years because the demand is so high. So we're going to have our own in West Cork, and that's the campaign at the moment, and that's the big kind of I suppose. It's the big push that's on at the moment, is that we would have a campaign. And I particularly hope that, I, I'm assuming that most of you are from Clonakilty, um, it will either be in Clonakilty or it will be in Bantry. It can only be in one of those two locations. There has to be a 24-7 Garda presence. And we're dealing with West Cork here. And as you know, most of our, our Garda stations are closed at nights and at weekends, so it has to be somewhere where there's an immediate Garda presence. So I'm looking for somewhere, <laughs> I'm also looking for the money, <laughs> but that will come, we know it will come, and it, it's, it's, but we will have our own safe house then, and the idea would be to have somewhere that we could work with other agencies, like the homeless agency and the community welfare officers, and give a woman and her children a place to be stable, to be secure, to be safe, to breathe out. And then we can start to go to work on the future plan and, and help her create a kind of new life for herself. Um, and that's really where we're at at the minute. We do have the service. We um, we do. If you know, I've left some information in the other room for you. Um, and I just want to say again, I've known a lot of brave women, but that was an extremely brave. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I was an old woman, and she lived in the woods. A wheel, a wheel. She lived 